Hello, Beat Baseball World. Another edition of the Beat Ball Blues show here from you, for you, here for you. And as, <laughs> as Chris and Kalari Jackson's six year old daughter Kayla would say, the Beat Ball World Series tournament is literally one week away we will be starting play one week from today i am neil mick 2024 mbba presidential candidate and i am here with my co-host press secretary chief of staff and campaign <laughs> manager dr bam bam clark head of Head of Secret Service, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but you'd have to come out of your ah, house. You'd have true. to leave your house to be a little more helpful. Ah, that, that, that's true. That's true. That's true. I need I need a more of my, I'll stay with my behind the scenes sort of titles. I'm sorry. I can tell you, I, I, I wouldn't mind having your six foot five right. frame protecting me. Uh, no, I, you know, when I, when I could see when I was young, I always wanted to be like one of those Secret Service people, man. I always thought the, 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 those guys were so cool in their, in their suits. And, they, you know, the main um, assassination attempt, you know, I saw was, was Reagan. And, and you know, as soon as those, those gunshots went off, man, all those dudes in suits just were on them, man. <laughs> and I was like, man, I want to do that. I want to do that. That, that. that looks cool. But. When that took place, I had already been blind for a couple years. Uh, certainly, I remember it being talked about. You know what I, I I remember most specifically about it? I was in seventh grade, uh, just started like junior high. And uh, I remember we got the news like coming out of, I, I, I don't, it seemed like it was right around lunchtime when it happened or when people at our school were finding out. And we went into a, a class. I don't, uh, uh, I remember the teacher was Mr. Helm and he, he, uh, he, uh, we had like back-to-back -back classes with him. He taught us both English and history, I think. But, uh, the, the, uh, like three or four of the kids apparently weren't, weren't, uh, supporters of reagan and, and literally there was like which when i look back now it's really weird because we were just like 12 but there were like three or four kids that came in the classroom going reagan die reagan die <laughs> and M mr helm just snapped <laughs> <laughs> he snapped he's like he and i agree with that you know what i mean you don't go around chatting for for people to die or whatever uh it, 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 like i said when i look back on it now it's it's kind of weird that they even went there you know kids that young you know what i mean what's a 12 year old got against any politician in, in most cases but that that's me who's not into politics maybe you would have a different uh, yes, perspective yes, yes, yes. <laughs> i'm always kind of disappointed looking out my my kids as they are you know had gone through their 10 11 12 year old years and with, with with no political consciousness i was i was politically conscious from from very 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 young very young and i actually remember i don't know why or how but we watched that assassination attempt on in, in in our my second grade class or something like that i don't know why she brought in the tv or maybe she showed it to us the next day or whatever but but yes i, I was second always great yeah second third grade yeah that makes sense uh, that can't be. Uh, yeah, I guess seventh or third. I was like, I was twelve. How were you in second grade? Well, <laughs> it's only like four years difference. Yeah, like, same uh, as our age difference. I guess it does add up, but that uh, didn't sound right. But that's I, I, well, I, I can remember watching the uh, the the nineteen eighty Republican National Convention. Man. <laughs> I know when I was like seven. Dude, you're like yeah, six, yeah. seven. <laughs> Dude, I, like I said, I've been I, I've been a political junkie for a long, crazy. long, long time. Man. That's crazy. <laughs> Something I like growing up, especially like in our era, there wasn't cable. You know what I mean? Like right. when we were kids, like that, we had like three, four channels, and, and in my family, we basically had one TV. My brother and I had a t black and white that somebody right. gave us. Like a neighbor gave us it literally took like 
20 minutes to warm up and come on. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we basically just had one good TV in the house and I hated when there was politics stuff going on because my mom and dad always had it on and it's just like nothing else to do, man. Uh... Uh, I, would, I would sit there. I remember I was watching 60 Minutes every Sunday with my father, man, all that stuff, going back to the 70s. And I remember I remember the Iran-Contra, not the Iran-Contra, the, 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 the hostages in, the, in, in Iran in, in 79, man, with watching the countdown and stuff like that. See, <laughs> I, I, like, but... I remember that, but for different reasons. That was like because you know that that all went on like it started i think in the fall of 79 i, I don't remember exactly it was before the elections yeah um and but... so it, it got cleared up like the day before the election shocking but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, shocking but true. I lost my eyesight in may of 79 uh, and um i i I, I was riding the, you know, we've talked about it on the show. That's when I was riding the short, started, had to write, right. start riding the short bus to school. And I just remember um, the, the bus driver and, and they, there was on some of the buses uh, back that, that I rode, they, there was like, not just the driver, but like an assistant to kind of help, I, I guess maybe with kids with wheelchairs or whatever. So there were like two, two people as, as part of the, you know, whatever, who ran the bus. And I just remember them talking about it every morning on the, <laughs> on the, on the way to school. What's going to happen? Oh, my God. Gas is going to cost $5 a gallon this summer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I, right. I, I had spent my whole life ignoring the world. And then once I went blind, all I could do is listen. And hearing all this chaos and stuff just scared me. It's like, God life was so much simpler like six months ago <laughs> yeah, right. yeah anyway. no it's crazy right but yeah i mean a political thing i didn't watch any of the the rnc last i don't think i'll be able to watch any of it this week i i can remember being with my first world series 1988 bringing it back to the world series sitting in my room with kimmy watts listening to the republican national convention with uh God, uh, not not Dukakis, uh, whoever the hell won it. Uh, uh, Eighty eight was Bush, yeah, Bush, right? yeah. the first Bush. Yeah, George W. George H. W. Man, I remember remember him being nominated and all that stuff. Man, that's crazy. I go back a long time. Did they used to call <laughs> Dukakis to taxes? Was was that his nickname or my name? I I don't remember something about that. I don't remember. Yeah. All right. Yeah, nah. Uh, well, bringing it back to politics, actually, because I, I, politics. The, the title I put on the show is Town Hall Revisited. Um, and that's, uh, we're, we're going to cover a lot of stuff, but uh, we're going to finish up the show. Uh, back when I was part of the town hall meeting, we were sent like seven things that we were expected to, to answer. And because it went long and they also took, uh, you know, questions. For audience, the audience questions. Yeah. We only got to like four of them. So Seth and I are going, going to address, or I guess it, Seth's going to throw them at me and I'm going to address the, the three that we never got to. Uh, but we're going to cover a few things, uh, including giving out, even though I'm sure the large majority of the beat baseball world has already taken in the seeds and the brackets for those who may have missed all that, we'll run that down. But Seth, I wanted to start with some uh, rules stuff. Uh, uh, you know, they had the the rules committee meeting last week where teams had the choice of voting stuff up or down as far as uh, making it to the floor to the to the general assembly right? no not general assembly to right. you know to the voting because uh, yeah, it's all yeah. done electronic yes yes uh, yes, so yes it's I, I none think, of it i think of it as the uh, as advancing let's say to the general election how about yeah that? yeah exactly yeah, right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> better better terminology though as i say i think all the voting <laughs> should be done at the at the tournament but or in the in the uh in general the assembly. assembly but go ahead we're I, I'm with you on the, uh, at least on the rules, um, especially, yeah. but uh, either way. Uh, so out of the nine that were submitted, only three of them passed. The the three that were passed, uh, kind of one ties into the, 
the the vision requirement that has um, been you know tossed around for like the last four years that the league hasn't really overall say, been able to settle on. I would say the the elusive. <laughs> <didn't require. laughs> right and i uh could, you know on our on the sirens uh we we went down all the rules and voted on them individually and right. even though the, our team voted yes to let that go to the election and overall it did it it did uh pass um you know by all the teams uh, by by a majority of the teams to to go forward and be elected on i voted against it only because and Kyle Lewis pointed this out that night that this isn't really a rule, you know, like the rules are something that, right. um, you know, uh, umpires are, are uh, got to be familiar with to be calling, you know, calling a game right. and uh, what, what someone's vision is or isn't, uh, have, you know, the umpires aren't, aren't going to have any like control well, over of a so. policy, like a league policy. Yeah, exactly. Right. To a, a, a a league rule funny funny there's a there's a question kind of dealing with that um yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, well, but, more on that later <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that's more of a policy as opposed to a rule but yeah i agree with that but go ahead so that uh, got I, so 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 what is that's uh, going to be voted on. um 2070 uh is is like going to be the requirement uh, uh that's that's uh, cited folk man come on that's, that's, that's uh, cor folk. someone's corrected uh vision can't be better than 2070 i i believe not okay. not like their not you know, their normal vision yeah, the, the, the corrected vision as i understand it well it is, can't be better in 2070 uh yeah I said the, the sliding scale of blindness. Well, that's crazy. But go ahead. Um, the other two that went up were uh, there. Uh, people are going to get a chance to vote on a, a standard blindfold. Um, it, uh, going forward, if this passes, you'll have to either use a mindfold or, and I should have double checked it. I've already like the goal, go, go phone fold or something. I, I can't, I've already forgotten the name. I should, again, should have double checked it. There's a second blindfold. If people have some kind of like a doctor's note that there's some kind of allergy issue, why they have to use a different material material or something like that they'll be able to use it but if it passes they'll have to use one of these uh two two uh sleep shades going forward and the third one actually i, hey, I what do you think what do you think about that one you gave us your opinion on the uh the the previous rule yeah yeah that's fair um i've only seen one of the two folds uh that that i um and only because i i got to play one whole inning in our, our little inner squad scrimmage a few weeks right. ago and so i wore a mindfold for the first time and what do um, you think of that i've never worn one or whatever you know I've i mean it was comfortable or whatever sleep shit, the old yeah. school ones I mean, it's what, you know, because going back to when I was playing, we, you know, we can tape people up and we can force players we don't trust to uh, wear, wear a blindfold that we would have to provide as a team in the oh, mindfold. Yeah, so, hey, you know, I, I'm part of the heat, man. I've been part of the taping war. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, the mindfold's what we would provide when we asked a, a team to make their player use a, a sure. something we provided. So, I, I, you know, obviously we thought it was a, a good fold i i've never seen the other one i i'm not familiar with it but and the mind fold isn't the one that looks like ski goggles right not goggles it is like a big plastic shield it is yeah, yeah. okay yeah, uh, all right then it is and, and it's got like a foam thing that goes around the yeah. whole like rim of it or whatever yeah, no, that's like I mean, they're just like ski goggles. Those are those, those right. are basic. I never wore a ski goggles, so I don't, I, uh, I don't, I don't really remember. I like when I think of goggles, I think of like swimming goggles. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nothing yeah. like that. Yeah, no, they're like modified ski goggles or whatever. I I do think it's good for the league. I, I, I'm not an expert on what what sleep shades we should use or uh, blindfolds whatever but i i do think it's good that the league has a standard blindfold and i'm glad that it's more than right. one choice 
um, you know, people will have choices. And I believe the second one who, that, whose name I'm forgetting um, it has like two different styles and both are going to be acceptable. So literally, literally, as Kayla would say, there's like three different choices for people. Um, so I think that's good. Like li uh, the, 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 the blindfold I used over the last several years of my career, there's no reason. I mean, I'm a total, so who cared? It was just comfortable. It's something our boy Bill Johnson let me borrow once, and it was so comfortable. I just kept it. <laughs> no, I, 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 I've done the same thing. I, I mean, my, my blindfold would not be acceptable. I've had the... The, the umpires be like, man, you know, you need to change this blindfold. And I was like, man, come on, man. I'm, I'm a total. I can give you my eyes right now, man. Come <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. Y'all yeah. see me out there missing balls for 30 years. Come on. You know I ain't cheating. No, but, no none of the umpires ever said anything about the one I wore, but I, I wouldn't trust it with a player I didn't trust. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't that good. So I do think going with a standard is good. Um, and then the, the third one, and I, I kind of like it too for helping uh, with uh, defensive like spotting and setting up fields. There's now, I, I'm unclear on how long the line's going to be. Well, I, people still have to vote it up, I guess. I, I, so I shouldn't say that it, it'll, it'll be this way now. But um, uh, uh, for a line to be drawn straight up the center of the field, going from the 40-foot line all the way out to the home run line, I remember there was some discussion. I was confused on this whole thing because I, I went into it thinking there was only eight rules. I had somehow missed the, the ninth one, this this one I'm talking about now. So I was like, what are they even talking about? Where where was this? I think a second email was sent out, and I was like, oh, I got it already, and I didn't even read the second email, so that's on me. But I think they might have settled that it only needs to be drawn out like 120 feet you know, rather than going all the way to the home sure. run line, but I'm not, I'm not positive about that, but I, I do think that would be helpful for teams getting set up faster and uh, may, maybe not whatever. Yeah, uh, no, no. I don't have a problem with it, I guess sure. in, in the end. And if it'll help our spotters then I'm all for it. Um, <laughs> two, two things on, on the rules. Uh, uh, one, I want to revisit from, uh, our, our talk with Demo, but uh, one that you'll be specifically interested in because you were the original author, the only author that <laughs> put the, <laughs> that put forth the rule change to on a dead ball. We go to just a, a no pitch rather than giving the batter a a full brand new count, uh, yeah right. brand new count replay. And um, there was a rule, I think, for maybe the second time since yes, the yes, 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 went yes, through. Yes, people, uh, hey, 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 some blind people really dislike that, man. Some blind, I, I was thinking about it. It's like, man, you know, I mean, this is just a totally, hey, help me on blind sort of rule. <laughs> like I'm entitled to a new count. No, you're not. But go ahead. <laughs> well, I I don't agree with that. I I don't I don't agree. Well, I, 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 I go ahead. I'll, I I will because there there's no. There's no justification for it, but go ahead. What are we going to say? Well, uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> Outside so, of, hey, help me on blind. Right. I'm entitled, but go ahead. I did, yeah, just, I mean, <laughs> first, like, completing the whole thing for our audience. So there was right. a rule put forth to go back to where on, on a dead ball, there's a complete um, new count. Uh, where where I have a problem with it and want to st stick to it, leave it where it is uh, now, is every time I hear the argument for going back, it's always that they they act like every dead ball should have been a run, which right. I you know. Right. Right. I, I right. know that not everybody agrees with me <laughs> because right. when I said this the other night at the meeting, there was pushback on it, and that's fine, but. I, 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 you know, I played out on that field for over 20 years and, and there are plenty of dead balls that I knew our defense had a shot at if the yeah. ball had kept beeping. And so given, given a batter, a, a new count and a chance to blast one over our head after we could have fielded the ball, they broke uh, yeah. that, that, you know, that always rubbed me the wrong way. So that's why I say I didn't like agree with your, your, I mean, we got different yeah. thoughts why it should stay the same What? No, I mean, finish yours. No, I mean, that's the basic, I mean, I have the same idea that, right. I mean, there, I mean, that's why I put the, the rule forward because that's what happened to the, to the heat. Uh, I believe in that, in that Boston game that, that was like uh, recounted in 
the uh, book beep. Um, you know, a ball that we would have gotten, and and then they got a new count and they scored, right? And and you know, to me, there is no the when the ball's not beeping, the team that is at the disadvantage is the defense. And then how do you give a benefit then to the offense? It just doesn't make any sense. And even if it was, I mean, you can look at at baseball, right? If you hit a a foul ball over the fence, right, that would have been a home run. Even if it's just an inch, you still, right? I mean, you, you, it's still a strike, right? It's a long strike, right? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's not, oh, oh my God, they would have scored a a, a home run. (laughs) Let's give them a whole brand new count. (laughs) No, nobody thinks like that. And that's why I say it's this kind of this, you know, I'm I'm entitled, you know, because that's how the world that that's how the rules were years and decades ago. You know what I'm saying? It was it, it wasn't all like uh, as focused on competition as we are now. Um, and so it's just not fair to, to not to, to if you're going to give a benefit and the team that is at the disadvantage is the team that, that that's on the field because there's no beeping ball. How do you then give that that benefit to the offense? It just doesn't make any sense. Also, it makes the games longer, right? Um, also, it it puts balls in in more jeopardy, right? There's more balls that are going to get broken. Yeah, yeah. There, there's just no there's no justification for it except this idea that oh, I would have scored, so I need my my full count back no <laughs> or my my zero zero count back and and i agree with you 100 percent. no it, it's not guaranteed that you would have scored yeah. right it's not somebody can make a, a great play and so let people make a great play we want a a, a competitive league or or a a, a competition-based league then then those type of rules need to go by 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 right and, and let us play play you know adult rules and so, so I was glad that, that that got voted down. I wish people would stop putting it up. I believe, just me, every rule that gets passed should benefit the defense <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and be all about bringing our scores down, right? Making the games more competitive. I mean, in, in the NFL, what do they do? They change rules to make the scoring higher, right? Games faster, scores higher. Um, because that's what entertains people. I don't think that's what entertains people and people, right? I don't think a 32 to, you know, 40 game is entertaining to the, to the sighted public or Beep. even the blind public. You know? <clears throat> Beat ball wise though, something, I mean, that, that I guess makes me uh, agree with you. I, I didn't agree with the way you said it, like should always favor the defense, but in, in beat ball and I've, talked about this since back when i started there there's no other sport i can think of where the off the like the top offensive people are successful at like 80 percent and higher right, right. And, no that's true uh, i i just can't think of a single other sport where the offense you know the top offenses right. uh, have such a high success rate um, so I guess from that standpoint, I don't want to do anything that makes offense uh, better, gives offense more opportunity. And this other rule I, that I want to revisit because we talked about it with um, Demo uh, was the one about um, double calls to where it, the same thing instead of because right now if there's a double call, the the offense is automatically awarded a run. And the rule was to, instead of giving them that run, you know, go up and do a, a replay. And I like, we're just taking another, you're, the offense already got a free run. Like, why are we going to take a chance at breaking another ball or right. making the game go longer, longer right. uh, whatever? Um, and the author, Zach Arambula, you know, he did have some examples of, of, um, uh, things that happen in in games with the jets to why why he thought that would be better and be honest with you I, it, it's not that i didn't listen i just have heard so much since and i don't even don't remember what they were <laughs> um and it did get voted down but why i wanted to revisit it because i had mentioned i was like did you i remember asking you did you know that spotters could be like ejected from games for making double right. calls and even ejected from the tournament and demo asked he's like well is that you know the rule as it's written, or the, the was that part of the new 
you know, the, the, the new recommendation or what was put forth. And that is actually how I went back and reread it. it. It is how it's written now. However, I don't think it's intended the way I was taking it. Like I was just seeing, are you kidding me? Like the double calls are not helpful to the defense. So on top of that, we're going to eject. <laughs> if, if there's spotters that are bad enough, they're making multiple bad, you know, double right. calls. We're going to eject them and punish the team even more. But it, it, it it's kind of lumped in with other things. Like if they're given players directions, sure. if it, and, and if it's just like one spotter and they change the call, cause that's technically that's a double call. So if there's sure. one spotter that says three, no, five, sure. that, you know sure. what I mean? And that continues to happen. That, that is helping. You know what I mean? Whereas sure. No. Sure. Two, two spotters make it one, making a good call and the other one making a bad call. That's not helping. Two and one at the set, basically, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. you know, that's second not, apart. That doesn't help. Yeah. That's not helping. And I'd hate to see players get thrown out for that, but I don't think that's, when I went back and reread it, that's not the intention of it. It's, it's just making sure that it, the writing's clear that spotters cannot help beyond calling the one right. number. Um, and in the end, I've, I've never heard of a spotter being thrown out for too many like double calls. So I guess it's not a problem, but right. I, I remember that jumped out at me. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> We're going to punish defense even further after they're already punished by giving a double call. That means they're going to give an automatic run. We're going to punish them further and throw their right. spotters out of the whole tournament in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that no, was that, crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. No, it's anyway. different. That's really all I had to touch on and, role wise. And, and, and if I could just real quick circle back to that other call, that that other role, I would be far more. And I'm not a big fan of of umpires, and I've said this before on the on the show. And I I don't mean I'm not a big fan of umpires, but I'm not a big fan of leaving things totally up to umpires. Yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to say, I would be far more inclined to be down for changing that rule, and I'm not. But if you were to say, "Man, we'll leave it up to the umpire," right? If that, if you're talking about on a, dead balls, because you didn't, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, on dead balls. I mean, if it was beyond a reasonable doubt that that was going to be a score, then fine, right? <laughs> then, then, then you, then, then only under those circumstances. But, but to me, I want, I want do it. But make it a subjective call, if anything. But, but that causes nothing but problems. So. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's a whole bunch of our audience that has no idea, probably, that that's the way it was when we started playing. It changed right around the time you and I came into the game. Um, I, I can't remember if it was voted on and changed in 88 or like right in that, right at the time we were starting to play right. and, and that changed, but you know back in the day when 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 the MBBA started on dead balls the umpire had a had the freedom to make right. a subjective call nah, they couldn't have fielded that we'll do that we're going to award it a run right. and, and teams hated that because you know the teams on the losing end of that rarely ever agreed with the yeah, exactly they're like man i could have i could have fielded it man what are you talking yeah, about yeah. who are you to tell me one way or the other yeah, if i could have yeah. fielded it Teams right. did not dig the 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 subjective call being <laughs> yeah. made by the umpires, and in the end, I don't I don't know that the umpires, many of them, probably like being in that position. So uh, it's, a, it's a hard one. I mean, it's a it, it's it's a hard one. Yeah. It seems like it'd be easy though, right? It seems it, like you know it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just but you'd have to be like, oh, well, where did that ball actually stop? Right? Because if if it's a, a line drive, but it stops at 165 feet. Well, then, you know, yeah. somebody has a shot to get that ball, you know, I mean, depending on where it is, if it's not. And, and also, like, like how judgmental is the umpire being? Like, you know, it's, right. it gets hit near two players who are considered to suck on defense. Like, are they making right. the call? Like, ah, you yeah, like, he uh, got another it, right? team, that would have been an out, but with these two clowns, <laughs> that's right. a run, so, uh. Uh, so I, I don't I don't nobody's yeah, no, ever suggested going back to that. So I don't, I don't think we need to worry about that. No, no. I mean, but I would be more down for that than just assuming that every dead ball would have been a run and let's benefit the offense. That yeah. that's ridiculous. That's silly. That's silly. Agree. But 
All right. But That's all I got on the runs. Did you have any questions about any of the other rules or anything? I, off the top of my head, can, like nothing jumps out at me to, to, to bring no, up. I can't. Right. I can't remember. I do think <laughs> that, you know, rules, though, there need to be rules that make the game more competitive, more exciting, uh, more appealing to a wider audience. And I would, I would advocate that some sort of competition committee is put together um, to every year try to push our rules forward to, to make the game more competitive and flow better and uh, more more appealing to everyone. I I agree with that and in, in, in how you're saying it. I don't think so many rules should with any sport should be like thrown forward every year like I, I don't know it's almost like trying to reinvent the game when you know nine ten rules are are, right. are being thrown forward and again i'm not even talking people i mean with all the sports uh i you know rule, rules should be very clear to uh, very uh, the the direction of a rule should be very clear to improve the game, right. not just not just to change it. Because I think it would be better to play it this way than that way. Like, no, how, no, how gotta, does it improve the game? Right, you got to be p- pushing forward to improve the game. I'm, I'm that that that's what I'm saying. I'm not. Don't just make rule changes to make rule changes. Yeah. Hey, this um, I know what let's do. <laughs> this would be fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that not 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 that, but it's got to be. There's got to be a targeted. Um, reason to to institute the rule or put the rule there and like i said i think you should always go to like making defense more effective <laughs> no definitely uh, our uh, games yeah. are going too long all right uh, uh, especially when game. we get on fields that are are too fast like uh, uh, you know the the games at times are just going too long so uh, I I and I I I mean I love defense, <laughs> so sure. I, it, uh, anything that makes the game more competitive, more competitive defensively, sure. I'm, I'm always going to listen. Anyways, all right, yep. yes, 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 yes. All right, let's run. Uh, let's run down the seeds and the brackets for for people that have not checked it out. Oh, you don't even got to tell me, man. It's been, it's all year. And with all the big signings and all this and that, we already know. Well, I don't know which where you'll stop. We already know that the, the archers are the number one seed. So we don't even got to look at that. Well, you're incorrect. We do need to look at the number uh, one seed is, uh, you said, it, yeah, the number no, one seed is the ND Thunder. <laughs> no, I do that. I no, saw I that, but I, that much, <laughs> I thought that was surprising. What's uh, the, the what was the 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 thought process beyond that behind that? Well, well, I you know the teams. There are thirteen different teams that submitted their uh, that had the right to rank. Thirteen of the twenty teams earned the right to rank this year, and I, that's the I I I can't speak to why they did what they did. <laughs> um, right around the time because we had our last meeting Tuesday night, and then all the teams had to have their submissions in by thursday night and somewhere on thursday it came out that that my 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 man my friend david smith is in the hospital um he he went in to because he was uh experiencing discomfort and uh they they found a mass um so his availability for the world series was became a big question mark so um I, I, you know, I can't speak for all the teams, but I, I do think in, in cases, cause there are a few teams that resubmitted uh, their rankings yeah, yeah, after right, right. seeing that news or whatever. Right. So um, I, I think that had an impact. I, I'm hearing that D Smith will be at the world series. I, I, I hear from the get, he was saying come hell or high water, he was going <laughs> to be there, but um, I just got a, a, a word yesterday that he absolutely is going to uh, be at the world series. I hope he's all right. I mean, thoughts right. and prayers out, out to my boy. I love D Smith. 
Uh, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I don't sure. want to see anybody from our sure. membership go through that. Not just because I love D. Smith, but sure. uh, I don't, I don't want to see anybody go through that. I know he's one of the hardest workers uh, getting prepared for the tournament and, uh, and, and, you know, having this come up literally like the week before the turn, two weeks before it was a horrible situation. But thoughts and prayers out to our boy. Um, all right, let's run down the rest. So number one, Indy Thunder. Number two, Gateway Archer. Number three, the Indy Edge. Four is the Philly Fire. Five, Boston Renegades. Six, your Bayou City Heat. Seven, New Jersey Titan. Eight is the Chicago Commons. They uh, kind of took a bump up. More, I think they finished... I don't know, 11th or 12th last year. And and they, they've worked their way back up to number eight. Same with Austin Blackhawks, number nine. I, it, I, I don't remember which one finished 11, which one finished 12, but they both uh, got moved up a little bit. Tyler Tigers, coming number 10. Oklahoma Lookouts, number 11. Houston Hurricanes 12. We just had John Parker, Houston Hurricane, on with us the other day. That's, uh, I think, the biggest drop because they sure. finished eighth last year and they're they're uh, seated 12th in this one. Number 13, Cleveland Scrappers. 14, Atlanta Chaos. 15, the BCS Outlaws. They're probably the toughest to rank because they, they haven't been there in like two years and they finished 12th the last time they were there that they ended up being seated 15th here. Number 16, Minnesota Millers, 17 from Ouch. California. Ouch. What? <laughs> Miller? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty close. They finished like 15th last year. So they're, no, they're... it was just that your, uh, Uh, what? No, uh, sorry, just that. Uh, um, the uh, just that you were saying that the B B C out whatever B C S says out loud. Ha hadn't even been there in two years. <laughs> but, uh, again, so the and I get you know I get I just say well no I yeah I mean just to give you a little more context though the uh, the instructions given to teams is to start where the teams finished last and this was unusual because we have for them had to go back two years but they, they finished 12th the last time they were in a tournament uh, so i you know who knows what what people uh can considered uh when when Size right, no, that, right, right. that was the hard what that might have been the hardest team for me to decide on with my right. own personal rankings uh, because because of that like and also like i felt like they fin finishing 12 was high for them like i um i think people kind of looked at their 12th uh place finish the same way they did houston hurricanes finishing eighth last year people just thought that they they were managed to finish higher than the like what their talent said. I, I mean, I, I can only assume that that's kind of the way right. people looked at it. Um, number 17 from California, IA, the San Gabriel Valley Panthers moved up to 17, 18 wow. Boston strong, a brand new team got, got bumped ahead of two returning teams. Um, and then 19, the Braille bandits of West Palm beach. And, my as it's listed st louis sirens but that's incorrectly listed we are just the sirens people but well, uh, Cody, you know go out there and kick somebody's ass man <laughs> you know they put you at 20 man of course they're gonna put you at 20 man but uh, out there and, 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 and prove some people wrong man well in all fairness do you know i have every intention on doing that but in all fairness as far as the the ranking goes i mean we we only scored seven runs last year in six games, and we went out to Vegas and only scored one run in three games. Like, even at getting to speak on the sirens' behalf, like, what do I tell people that says we deserve to be ranked high? And what did the Braille Bandits do? They beat us though when we played them last year, four to one. Oh, like, in the in the you guys, the, you we fate that was our last that. game last year. Yeah, oh, God. I, I I didn't know that or whatever. Yeah, they beat us four to one. So all right. In, in a game that, uh, and I wasn't on the sirens yet, right. but I was there with them, and that's a game that the, the sirens filed a protest in because there was some weird stuff that went on during the game. 
we lost the protest. Actually, that was kind of my fault too, because I I should have been able to point out we we filed the protest like later after the incident. Like you have to if you're gonna protest, you got to protest sure. right in the moment. Um, so I mean I don't either way. Like I a, a, as a coach of the sirens, I would love a shot at at, at the Braille Bandits again because I even though I I can't tell people we're better because we we don't have the stats to back it up. I feel like we're better. I mean, certainly yeah. adding Kalari to our team yeah. make, makes us better talent wise. But you know, our group that had no experience last year has more experience now, and and we've been working at it on both sides of the ball. So. I feel better about our chances. I love. I'd love to get a shot at the strong at, at the Braille Bandits. You know, I, I would say California, but we played them in Vegas and they beat us eight nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was uh, early in the year, though. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, yeah. a lot of practice time between yeah. now and then. Yeah. Man. We're on, missing man. some of our all stars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have our whole full yeah. roster. Yeah. So. Well, good luck. I, 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 I'll be pulling for y'all. Ah, I appreciate that. Looking forward to you buying you some sirens gear and sporting it around. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, you know me. <laughs> so let's run down the brackets. Bracket A then is going to have the Indy Thunder, <laughs> Tyler Tigers, Oklahoma Lookouts, and my sirens. Bracket B, Gateway Archers, Austin Blackhawks, Houston Hurricanes, Braille Bandits of West Palm Beach. Bracket C, Indy Edge, Chicago Comets, Cleveland Scrappers, and the Boston Strong. Bracket D is the Philly Fire, New Jersey Titans, Atlanta Chaos, and the Panthers of San Gabriel Valley in our last bracket. Bracket E, Boston Renegades, Value City Heat, BCS Outlaws, and the Minnesota Millers. I'd say like the the game to most anticipate out of all those is the the Heat and the Renegades. Um, but I don't, you know. I don't know and all the all the and and some of the lower cedar ones. There's cedar really ones. maybe the uh, in this same bracket the outlaws and the Millers, but outside Correct. of that, there's not a lot of well balanced. You know, uh, no. Like, and and this one, if you did this bracket right in a in a championship consolation format, it would it would come out right. You know what I'm saying? If if you sent ten up and ten down, it would come out right. For the most part, you know, there's not that there, there's not a there's not that, uh, uh, you know, those three teams in that in one bracket. They're like, oh, yeah, they're 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 definitely championship material. So but that's just my thought. Fair enough. That's all I got on that. We've already gone quite a while and shocking, I, but yeah. true. Told Shocking, you, but told, true. Told you I don't have a lot of time in 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 uh, the title of the show, town hall <laughs> revisited. <laughs> <laughs> probably go take a second, so we should probably move on to that. Uh, right. I guess just so people know, uh, I, I I sent the three things that weren't covered uh, when we did the town hall meeting with Chad Dillon uh, to Seth. Um, so he's just going to throw them at me and I will do the best I can to, to give you all my thoughts on these things. I wanted to do this because, um, I, I you know, I, I think they're all things, all three things that people probably want to hear, um, some conversation on, but certainly one of them I, I felt like, uh, was one of the ones I was most looking forward to addressing the night of the town hall meeting and we never got to it. So sure. like an opportunity to, to do it here. All right. Well, we'll go. I, I got, I got a couple questions in front of me here <laughs> then in, in, in your opinion, right. Unnecessary because it's always your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everything's uh, about my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, of course. Oh, but um, why has it been so difficult for the board of directors to move forward on new initiatives? All right, and, and he throws out a couple of examples: vision policy, 
stuff like that. Um, and, and then the, the 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 last part of that question is why why does it seem like the uh, uh, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing it here that the the uh, let's say the electric kind of votes everything down, um, but technically why has it been so difficult for the board to get their policies instituted into actually um, law <laughs> or actual rules? So I I never really agreed from the beginning that this is a constant problem. I feel like there are a few hot topics that really stand out to, to people. And, and really the number one uh, example is the, the vision policy. And I really personally think that it comes down to how it's being delivered. And, and it, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with more being decided at general assembly and less, um, you know, being decided out, outside of general assembly. I, I have felt for a long time that it's pretty I, easy to identify, I, I, I believe, what what things are going to be hot topics for our 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 membership and when it comes to stuff like that i believe we as an organization need to bring that to general assembly instead of deciding on what's going to do and then just announcing it at general assembly and and having the membership explode like hey 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 we need to hear our voice on this the the best example for me is when we changed our format from you know, the, the consolation and championship bracket to the format that we played now. In 2005, J.T. Herzog was allowed to go up in front of the General Assembly and present his idea of a new format and why he thought we should switch to it. And the membership, you know, by majority, elected it forward. And that's still how we are playing now. That's not what's been going on, especially with the the, the vision requirement. Uh, you know, everybody's showing up at the at General Assembly ready to fight against it because it's already kind of being decided, uh, you know. Um, and I, I just feel strongly that there are, there are some things that we can identify ahead of time as a membership that um, it, it needs to go before the membership. Uh, there's one more topic and I don't want to mention it now. One more topic we're going to touch on. It, um, I feel strongly it is also something that needs to go before the membership, before the board or any committee decides on it and says, this is what we're doing. There are some things we just need to hear the voices of the membership before we go forward. And so I think, Personally, the, the, the problem has been, and, and again, I don't agree that it's been a constant problem. It just stands out as a problem because there's been a, a, a really big hot topic over the last three, four years that keeps coming up. Um, but I, I, I feel like the approach just needs to be different. We need to take it to the membership before we, we go forward. And, and, and you and I have complained about it on this show more than once. And we've complained about it on, a, on just talking to each other personally, not enough stuff anymore is being done at general assembly. All they're doing at general assembly is kind of going through, uh, 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 an agenda and, and making announcements and just and, telling and, and, everybody and, and, and an itinerary right yeah. <laughs> that's, basically, that's basically what it is there's yeah. a program for the week Go ahead. this is what we're doing for <laughs> you guys <but laughs> we're not the the discussion has been taken out of general assembly and even right. though we all hate it I, I hate it i don't like sitting there for three hours arguing over stuff but it's where we got stuff done. It's the only time over the entire year, the entire calendar, each year, it's the only time when the entire membership has the right to show up and talk. And I've I've not liked how it's been taken away from General Assembly more and more over the years. And frankly, I, I, I'm always going to push that we 
take the things like vision, you know, policies, we take it to the general assembly because they're, they're the ones that got to play with it and live with it. So they need to be happy with it and comfortable with it. No, I mean, I, I, it, I, I'm not, it's not for me to agree or disagree with you, but I have noticed that things ever since we've gone to not voting at general assembly, things don't pass. Right. You don't you don't get the same number of people participating in the votes. Right. The the votes always drop by, you know, there's like 400 people at General Assembly, but then you get, you know, 150 people voting on these things. Uh, but I think if you 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 know, I think I, I 100 percent agree with you. if you brought stuff back to General Assembly, presented it at General Assembly, allowed people to discuss it, fight about it, hatch it out at. Uh, general assembly and then vote on it there i think you would uh you would the 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 the, the nation the the nation the membership <laughs> the, 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 the league would be able to go yeah the association would be able to go forward um a lot easier with these things does it win or lose if you get a chance to to voice your opinion before the decision's been made you at least right. I, I believe we all at least feel like we had our say win or lose all right. all right no i agree with that i agree with that um so do you this is an i'm going back to another uh, um i'm going back to, to to the questions here um do you see a benefit in the nbba partners partnering with usaba and if so how do you make that happen um and you know, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll just throw that. At... And obviously, if you if you don't think we should partner with uh, Usaba, why don't you? So I I have no reason to say I don't think we should. Um, so I I don't even need to address that. Uh, the United States Association of Blind Athletes is, I'd have to assume, the largest governing body we we have that does anything with blind athletes so th i have no reason to not try to partner with them and and benefit from a relationship with them i i've never been part of any of the discussions in the past and i don't know that any of them have been really well documented or or shared publicized so I can't speak intelligently to why um, nothing's ever come out of our discussions with um, the USABA, but I, I as president would absolutely uh, it, it, I welcome any opportunity to talk with the USABA and, and get discussions going. I don't know long-term, if it's a good fit for them or for us, I mean, the MBBA has like to have a full partnership, like say to where they're running our tournament and they're, right. they're sanctioning and running our, 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 they're always called regional tournaments, but they're really uh, invitational tournaments. Um, I, I don't know that that's, I, I, until I have the discussion with, um, you know, the leaders from the USABA, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what their their side of that is. So it, right. it's, if they would want to take over our league, but also I don't. I don't know that our league wants to. I I, I don't know that our own membership, the NBBA, wants to have Usaba totally take over. Because I mean, right. you and I played goal ball, and, and there's. Uh, like region restrictions as far as like who can play with who like uh, the 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 rules of the mbba are going to change and, and i don't mean like our rule book but uh, how how we're able to play and and who's going to be umpiring and all that stuff like the usaba if they're going to be a full partner it, it, it would have to be involved in all of that so i don't know how that would all play out i don't know what would be best for the MBBA or you, you the USABA, but I am absolutely open to having discussions. I, I think we could benefit, even if it's a limited partnership, 
I think we can benefit. I mean, again, they're a huge, successful organization that promotes blind athletes all year round. So we absolutely can benefit from it. And I would love an opportunity to have conversations with the leaders of the United States Association of Blind Athletes to, to see what would be a, a good fit for, for both sides. And, and being open-minded to the fact that, you know, ultimately maybe we, we could be, uh, be run by USABA and maybe that would help us with, um, you know, finding grants for, for balls and getting better technology and that stuff. Like I I'm open to all the possibilities that could benefit from that and taking it a step further, the international association, um, uh, 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 internet, <laughs> I, I, I've forgotten it. the Oops, internet. Uh... Yeah, the International Association of Blind Athletes. I was trying to throw an S in there for some reason. I was like, what's the S for? Uh, there is no S. The International Association of Blind Athletes is another one because, you know, we've been talking for years about, you know, trying to develop uh, other other countries and other areas outside of the United States in, in the sport of beat baseball so that we can start walking towards um, having and even if it, it doesn't become an Olympic sport, but an maybe an exhibition sport, like uh, uh, you know, I believe blind soccer is going to be um, coming up at the Olympics. So, uh, I, I think uh, having conversations with organizations that are gigantic and have had tons of success in the the blind athletic world. Of course, we could benefit from that. Even if it's just conversations and we have a limited partnership, we can always benefit from that. They've they've got more reach than we do. So, yeah, 100% we can benefit from it. And I would look forward to the opportunity of giving it. Well, you're open to talk to, to whomever's out there that, that can help. I've always thought the problem is, do you want, not you, but does the NBBA want to give up running the world series right. right that that that's the do you want to say okay there is no more beat ball organization we are just a wing of usava um and that that to me has always seemed a little problematic but that goes to this whole uh you know uh, dividing you know the the idea of dividing into more of a champion or you know competitive slash recreational league physically um but no and but no. And, and i addressed yeah. it that uh, i addressed that at the at the beginning like i don't know if it's a good fit for them or for us be, because we've been doing our own thing for so long um uh, but also like the the players like you know our our players are always demanding more say in what the mbba does if we were under the USABA umbrella, <laughs> they were going to have less say, not not more say. Hey, I, hey, I believe. Hey, 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 hey Neil, I've, I mean, this has been you know decades now, but you know, I did USABA nationals and stuff like that. You know, I was on, I was on US teams um, for both goalball and downhill snow skiing. Skiing, yeah. Um, nobody ever asked me for my vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and again, on anything, man. <laughs> again, I, I, I want to be clear. I'm not offering that as criticism. I, I'm just, right. I'm just putting the facts out there. Like these are the things we will have to consider. It's not just like why aren't we part of Usaba? You know, like right. there, there's a lot to consider, both from their side <laughs> and from our side. But I'm right. happy to have those conversations. Right. I'm, 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 I'm excited to have those conversations. Right. I mean, they clearly aren't beating down the door to take us over, you know, or you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I don't know. I'm not privy to those conversations either. Um, so you good? You 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 expressed yourself on that. You're good. Yeah. I can ask you throw out another question to you. Yes, sir. And this is an this is an interesting one that that I know you and I have thought about over the years, mm -hmm. and 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 everybody kind of um, you know has talked about over these last few years and i've never thought personally that it's a totally bad idea uh, but what do you think about having the world series in one permanent place 
or do you think it uh, it should continue to jump around um or 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 what is there is your focus with your direction right again i know you're 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 about hearing what people want um but in in, in as a, a participant in the mbba for 30 40 years um you know, uh, what do you think? Should the World Series be in one spot, or or should it travel? I could see the ben- the benefits of both. And at one point, I don't know if you remember Vernon Smith, but uh, Ver- Vernon Smith uh, played beatball here in California uh, back back in the eighties. He was on the uh, Redwood City uh, Pegasus when I first started playing. I don't know if you remember that team from back when uh, we started. Yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> actually i think they're last year they were in the 86 world series and i think their last year as a team was 87 and then you started in 88 so it makes yeah. sense um that, that you don't remember them but um I, I i when i was on the tournament committee i remember uh vernon smith calling me uh just out of the blue <laughs> i didn't know if he still remembered me and he had the idea that we should go to like the the little league world series and the softball world series to where they have the the you know like a a main location that they go to every year and and i was against it when he brought it up because i like we had just gone to georgia in 2013 and from because we went to georgia for a world series four teams from the georgia area popped up so I, I've I've always felt like a, a World Series going to a new area gives an opportunity for for new teams to sprout up, and and we still have the Atlanta Chaos, like uh, you know that have hung on. They're the only one of the, and, and I, I don't even think the Atlanta Chaos was originally one of those four teams. But though you know some of the people that are running the Atlanta Chaos are part of the Atlanta Chaos came came from that whole 2013 uh you know World Series and just you know having it there locally and getting their interest on the on the same note though I do see that it could be beneficial um to have it in one location teens would always know exactly you know where where they need to prepare to be each year i think it would be like easier for the tournament committee like i I spent over a decade on the tournament committee i think it would make it easier for the tournament committee to be going to the same place know the same you know have a build a good group of volunteers that that will come out each year that you can depend on like you know what you're getting into when that that's the downside of going to a new city until we go there and play a world series you have no idea how good they're going to be at at you know like setting up the accommodations and and the volunteers is the big one because we've gone to new cities and and the volunteers just don't show up and the players don't know it as much but it, it runs the tournament committee ragged trying to get everything done when there's no volunteers out there to assign the field. So I, I do think there's benefits. This again goes back to um, where I think we, when, when it's a big ticket item, when it's a, 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 a hot item that people are going to feel strongly about one way or another, this is where I say it needs to go before general assembly. I, I don't think a committee, I don't think the tournament committee, I don't think the board should decide whether we should do it one way or the other. I think we need to ask the general assembly, what way do you want it? And if the majority says that they want to, to have it in one location, then we need to revamp our, our way of selling our tournament. We need to redo our, our request for proposal, our request for, uh, <laughs> what's the RFP? Uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank uh, on the P, uh, on, on the P. Um, what is it? When, uh... <laughs> I, 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 you know, I've heard it, but I don't, I don't, I don't, it's not my thing. I don't pay this too, so I can't help but, for it. But, but uh, you know, it, it, it's the base, it's just like a two- page little thing that's that the first thing a city sees to 
um, you know, to, to put a bid in on our World Series. They read through it and they get the basics, you know. In, in order to, to bid on our tournament, you need this many fields. You need this many hotels. You need to provide this right. much transportation. It's going to cost you this much. You need to provide these volunteers, this number of volunteers on these days. Um, so all of that needs to be revamped and we need to go out and sell it. Because I don't know, like, I know a lot of people are in favor of, of St. Louis. Uh, people are, are excited about St. Louis hosting the next two tournaments. And a lot of people have already stated that they they would possibly be a good permanent host. How do we know that before we play a single World Series sure. there, though? And that that's where I'm at. Like, I'm not giving our tournament away to anybody. I, in the sports travel industry, our, our tournament is part of that. That's a billion dollar industry. And our tournament is part of that financially, maybe on the smaller end of it, but we bring 500 people to a city every year for a week, sometimes 10 days. In some cases that, that that's nice revenue for some cities and I want them to earn it. I don't want to give any, any city our tournament. So I, I say we need to first find out, what the General Assembly wants. It doesn't matter what I think is best because I could be wrong. We need to find out what the... Well, the, gen the General Assembly could be wrong. As Aristotle well, said, democracy they... is the, the <laughs> worst form of government. And then if you were to take it to General Assembly, like I'm just throwing out a, a for example, for this year, right? The General Assembly, the number of people, the, the, the makeup of the league could be different next year. Right. Yeah, no, that's fair. It, that's fair. But I I I feel like this is something that we need to know the the temperature of, of the membership and what they want. Because just because a few outspoken people are saying this is what we need to do, it doesn't mean it's what the whole membership wants. We we on our show, I don't think you were there for this particular show, but one of the times the, the Philly Fire um, joined the show, Justin Rhines was on. And, and I threw this out to them. Uh, I, I don't remember why in, in, in that particular show, why I thought it was a relevant topic. But I, I threw it out to them. And Justin Rhines had mentioned that, like the idea of rather than just one permanent spot, like two or three permanent spots that we kind of rotate between so that it's not... Like if we put it in St. Louis, like for all the teams in the central time zone, you know, that that's good for them. But the people, you know, California still got to travel there every year. It, it's going to be very costly. And the, the East Coast still has to travel to the central part of the country. So, you know, for it, it, it's not like the perfect solution for everybody. Uh, so I, I I'm, I'm kind of open to all of it. Like, do we we do a rotating thing uh, of a couple cities, or do we just make it one permanent set? And and again, from working on it from the tournament committee standpoint, having it in the same place every year, in my opinion, makes it easier. So from that standpoint, I'm I'm perfectly fine with it. I just don't know that our whole membership that that that's what they want. But either way, we need to know. What I I think it, this I've always felt it, it, with this particular topic, we need to know what the membership wants, and then that's we need to go sell it. We need to we need to revamp the RFP, revamp our guidelines, and then go hit the Connect Marketplace and all these different symposiums where it, it's cities and events meeting up, like literally, you know hundreds of cities, thousands of events are getting together and, and sharing information to see who's a good fit. We need to go out and sell it and, and find our best fit. Cause I don't know that uh, uh, th thus far, we, I, I don't feel like we've been to a place yet where we think we should go here every single year. And I know like for someone like yourself, like the, the, places that have had comfortable temperatures you're like well no we do we need to go back there every time hey, minnesota <laughs> man minnesota is a long drive to, to, to the spot man but minnesota is the the, the number one man but that it, is the place it needs uh, to be we we can't even go back there because they ran out of space like they can't host the tournament 
at this point without it being in two different locations. Uh, you know what I mean? We're uh, two right. different sets of fields. So uh, I don't feel like we've played in that place yet. Uh, but I, I, again, I we need to sell we need to change the way we sell our tournament and then get out there and hustle and find the best fit not I, i'm never going to be in favor of just giving our tournament away to anybody whether it's for one year or or whether it's it's for a permanent uh uh, stay it, but there's also like a whole business side of it that we have to consider because it's easy to say we should just permanently put it in one place, but how do we negotiate with the hotel? Like a, a hotel's not going to give us a rate of 109 a night and leave it there for the next five years. Like what's a reasonable increase, you know, inflation wise, whatever to go up every year, because we can't turn around and give somebody a, a, a you know, the, the, the bid for the next five, 10 years and five years from now, we're paying $180 a night because we got locked in on something that, uh, we were short sighted on and didn't look at the whole thing. So they, um, there's a lot, it's more than just deciding, let's right. just put it here. We need to, to decide if that's what we're going to do as an association, because then we need to put together the business plan. No, I mean, that, that, that makes all, you know, that does make it, especially like with the hotel, um, cause you know, what happens if, if there's incidents at the hotel and they're like, man, we don't want, we don't want y'all blind folk back, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? And so, and, and if we made a choice like that, there needs to be options hotel wise, um, I like uh, something that happened, um, uh, when we gave the bid to Eau, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, they they only had, I mean, at the time they received the bid, they were the only team, they, they were the only city, sorry, bidding for the World Series. But they only had one hotel. Now, I did the site visit in Eau Claire, and it was a perfectly good hotel. It was a plaza. They had plenty of space for our whole group. You know, they did have other uh, hotels if uh, teams didn't want to stay at the host hotel. But they had plenty of room for our 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 big block that, that could have suited just about every team. Um, after they got the bid, the hotel sold. And they, uh, the, the, the people that bought it weren't making it, weren't keeping it a hotel. They went a whole different direction with right. the building. And that, that forced us in a position of like only having to, you know, go someplace else. It was going to be more expensive. So, um, there's a lot that has to be considered with it. You know, if we're going to give yeah. a city like a, a long term, I, I don't, I don't want to say permanent it because, sure. I, I, yeah. I, but a, like a long term stay, there needs to be options. Like we have to look at the whole thing, not just let, we want to go to one place and, and stay there. There, there needs to be options. Cause if a hotel closes sales, like you said, they have a problem with what happened or, and, and boot us out and, and, you know, get out of the contract, whatever, like we need to have options. We, we can't, what, cause, and you know, about this more, you know, about this stuff far more than I do. What about, and I know they did it in Ithaca. Um, what about a school? Like I've always looked at like UC Davis in the summer, right? There are plenty of, of dorms that are, are totally empty and there are plenty of fields that are really easy to get to. Um, would a, would a, like a college setting or like a blind school setting be something that is feasible or is that, is that not, is that not doable anymore? Not, I don't think the the latter, not the blind school setting. I mean, we we you and I went to Indianapolis School for the Blind in '93 for goalball nationals, and I I don't I mean I don't think it'd be big enough for the World Series uh, for <laughs> one. And, I mean, you and no, I, I just, uh, right. no, I'm you and I, and it. several other teams ended up staying in like these kindergarten dorms. <laughs> uh, right. But so I, the the school thing is feasible. And in Ithaca, like it, it was, uh, I, it was only a hundred and 
like a hundred bucks for the entire week to stay in the dorm. Um, they had the, the cafeteria open, you know, you go down and get to your free breakfast and lunches, whatever at, at, at the, the cafeteria. So it, it, it was inexpensive, but I don't, I don't, I mean, it was never done again. So I don't think the membership liked it that much. I, <laughs> I, I, it was my, you can't, you can't be getting drunk, smoking dope, all that stuff. I'm sorry. Mm, no, people were doing that. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> the, Maybe that's why it's never been done again. The, but go the, ahead. The, the, actually, you are right there. Like there was damage <laughs> there. I know, and I'm not calling out the team, but I know in one particular pace, case, there was a lot of damage done to a few of the dorm rooms. <laughs> uh, but but the very first midnight game ever happened in Ithaca, right, right. there, uh, and you know, down in the quad, in between some of the door right. rooms. So, um, you know, I uh, that plenty of yeah, that no, I, I've always just on. thought of that, especially being in in Davis, right? I see a huge. I mean, we have so many fields and and you know, all around the city, yeah. right? And 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 then you have dorms that are totally empty in the. In the summer, I was just like, oh, man, you know. It's a less so, expensive way to go, and it, I, I think it is feasible. I I mean, I don't I don't think people enjoyed it as much. It was my right. very first experience, so, right. you know, I had nothing to compare it to. It's like, all right, right. this is what we do. Um, but nobody ever did it again, so right. my, right. No, my no, gut no. feeling is that that's not a direction the membership wants right. to go. All right. All right. I don't know. I hope I I I I know I, I said more about that <laughs> than I did the the other two topics, but I don't I don't know if I clearly answered. I hope I did. Um, I mean, our our tournament's something I'm very passionate about. I love to be in part of the tournament committee, and I feel like I thrived more as a member of a tournament as a member of the tournament committee than I did as a, a board member or even as a player. I I said that to you before I think and it surprised you but I I'm I'm more proud of kind of the 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 work I did with the tournament committee than I am of like my playing career. Um I I really got to understand the the business side of of our tournament and and at the time that I was uh removed <laughs> from the tournament committee I felt like I was really starting to get in a groove of how we need to go after um, yeah, getting cities. Like I, 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 I don't want to, I don't know. I don't like sounding like I'm patting myself on, uh, on the back, but I, I've, I, I give myself credit for finding Tulsa and finding Norman, Oklahoma um, at, at times when we didn't have bids that were better. Um, uh, and I, I saw the fields they had compared to more than anything. I, you know, people could throw out, throw out the heat and all the other stuff. They had the most space and we, we had people putting in bids with expensive hotels and limited space. And, 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 and I got to go to a symposium, a symposium that at that time was called, uh, the national association of sports commissioners. It goes under a different name now, but over a three-day period, I did over 60 presentations to nearly 100 cities, and I took in all of their feedback. What kind of uh, space they had with fields was the thing that was jumping out at me the most. Um, so, like, I, I feel like I understand how to go after um, finding us uh, the best possible bids for our world series and i'll always push for that even if it's even if i i don't get elected president seth I, you and i might have to just keep doing the show so i can keep telling them how to do this stuff right <laughs> <laughs> i i care very much about our tournament and and i i i i, I absolutely hate that there has been so little competition to get our tournament over the last several years. There should be three strong bids that makes it a difficult decision for the decision makers every single year, in my opinion. I mean, and, and if we're going to go to our tournament, tournament being in one place, 
that I want multiple bids from multiple cities that are presenting great opportunities for our players. That that's what I'm going to strive for, no matter what the format is when it comes to our tournament. I hear that. I believe in you, Bill Doc. Oh, thank you. Sir. I believe in you. Thank you, sir. So, well, it's almost ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got. I literally have a million things to do yeah, today, right. so uh, it's right, time well. to get out of here. I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming in and, and doing this with me because, especially like the tournament thing, I've I've wanted I wanted to address when we did the town hall. Right. So I appreciate having the opportunity to do that. Hey, just... It's your show, man. You get to do whatever you want. Man. <laughs> well, I've never, I've never wanted to be like. Especially right, right, right. once I uh, was nominated for president, I never wanted to selfishly use the show to just, you know, try to get yeah, myself elected. I'll, I'll but I guess yeah. while I do have the mic in my hand <laughs> and uh, I, I'll make one last uh, plea for your vote, I do believe that I am the best candidate for president as far as being a leader of this league. Um, there's not a lot of areas in my life where I would say that as far as I, I would be the best candidate for you, but I, I, I do believe it in this case, I've wanted to be the president, um, literally since Dan Green was president, I hadn't been in a position then to do it. And, and until now I wasn't in a position to do it. I'm in a position now, so I'm ready to jump in and, and take it on when, when we started the dogs. I, I feel like I was kind of the initi the the first person that kind of initiated it. We had uh, gone through transitions towards the end of the blaze, and that's why I, I, I pushed real hard to get the Sacramento Thrashers to the World Series in '93. And I was, you know, I, Eric and I were both coaches, but I was coach, I was a captain, I was a player. And when it was all over, I, I, I had to take an honest look at myself and say, man, I realize now like what Don Robinson had been trying to do as a, as a leader of the blaze. And I swallowed my pride and I went back to him and said, man, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, I, I think we can do this together. And we sat down and we mapped out a plan and we felt good about it. And we brought you and Eric in and you guys felt good about it. And we stuck to our guns as leaders. And, and we, we created one of the most successful franchises in the history of our sport. And, and that's kind of the approach that I, I, I want to take here as president of the uh, of the mbba um i you know i i i hold myself accountable i i don't hide from my mistakes i don't try to you know uh, divert people's attention from the things i do wrong i'm going to learn from what i do wrong i'm going to learn from what the the uh, the, the rest of our league does wrong i'm going to learn from what we do right I, I'm going to hold the board members accountable uh, to doing the job that they, they set out to do, um, but I'm going to listen to everybody. You're not always going to get your way. I'm not always going to agree with you, but I'm going to take it in. And I think I've proven that with the, what the work we do here, Seth, like we've, well, we've been willing to take in every idea, every thought, you know, uh, anybody that, that, feels like they wanted to to put something out there that the league should consider we've been open to all of that i i'm a good listener i'm an active listener i i take in what people are saying in, in groups i know how to facilitate groups it, it's something i've been successful at in the past i i take it all in and i just start spitting out ideas of where i th where i think we should go other people start voicing it in and, and we just start molding and that that's how i feel like we need to go as a league there hasn't been enough conversation i i i I, I believe there's been too much dictatorship in our league in the last seven years. 
Uh, and I, I want us to get away from that. This is a we league. We need to do it together. We need to stop being so divided and, and, and fighting when we don't agree with each other. We need to, to, to get in and just start discussing stuff and figure out the best route to go. And I promise you, I, I will push forward with the route, that whatever direction we have decided to go as a group. I will push that with all the, the push I have and trying to achieve the best possibly we can possibly have. Hey, well, I can vouch for you. You know, I know you're a listener. You're empathetic and you're, you're, you're strong headed and all leaders need to be strong headed. All right. Once you have your direction, you need to go, but you'll, you'll be able to, you know, take that direction to it, 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 its fruition. Obviously, you've done it on this show. You've done it with the dogs. You've done it, um, you know, with the tournament committees, all that stuff. So if I was a, a voting member, Neil Dog, you'd have my vote. But... <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate, appreciate that very much. Uh, and actually, it means a lot because you and I fa fight like cats and dogs. Yeah, you and I don't always see eye to eye, even though we're so yeah. much alike. We don't always see eye to eye. But for whatever reason, you and, and the other dogs have always accepted my leadership. I, I've never even totally understood that. I, I, I've said it uh, in the past, uh, applying for a job. I remember saying it to, to a supervisor I was talking to. I was like, I, I don't understand it, but my team would have followed me into a burning building and I, I want to honor that for the league. I want to honor that for the league. I love this league. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. I promise you that if I'm elected, I'm going to give you the best version of me that I've ever been. I don't know that it makes a difference in all the things that we're facing <laughs> as a league because we got a lot of challenges, but I promise to give you the best version of me and, and fight to keep this thing going. I, I love the opportunity this league gave me and I 50 years from now wanted to be given other blind people the same opportunity. That's all well, I got, Seth. Though. Well, well, that's good, man. Well, let's uh, let, let's close out the show. You're the closer mm -hmm. outer of the show. Right now. <laughs> all right. So I can't close out the show. I don't have all those uh, controls in front of me. But have a good flight tomorrow, man. You know. Appreciate hopefully, that. Hopefully, you won't have any. Uh, don't even put bad thoughts. Don't even put either. bad thoughts. In my head. <laughs> don't even put bad thoughts. In my head. Everything's my, my, gonna be smooth. My brother Adam was on a flight from Utah to San Francisco just uh, three days ago or last week, and it caught on fire. He had ash falling on him and on his seat, but they returned safely to Utah, and, and he's okay. So so even if bad stuff happens, Neil <laughs> Doc. <laughs> Turns out all right. <laughs> now, didn't your mom, on, on the uh, way to one of the World Series tournaments, didn't they have to, like, put all the phone stuff on the, on the tarmac and like, I don't know belly if it was, flop or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was on the way to the world series, but yeah, she did. She did. Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt, man. That's, That's uh, what I not, thought I remembered. Not going. With. You I'll, know, be, I'll be, I'm glad I'm not going. <laughs> on a, on a fun note, uh, throwing it out there to you because this uh, shares one of our common loves but you know I, I was in the St. Louis area uh, working with my team here just a few weeks ago and I went out to uh, a restaurant because I, I, I wanted to try some, some St. Louis barbecue while I was there and a place that got a four star rating or four and a half star rating I don't even know it's called it's either smoke. I think it's salt and smoke or smoke and salt. I should have double checked it. Uh, I think it's I think it's salt and smoke. I, I don't know. It's a barbecue place that one one of uh, one of the locations is right across the street from the uh, Cardinals uh, baseball park. 
Uh, but awesome ribs, dude. Some of the best ribs I have ever had. Uh, you, you know how you, like when you found Houston, so we got like all it, all addicted. Like I, I can't wait to go back and have their ribs again. <laughs> they're so good. I had the baby back ribs wet and they're just perfectly made. Like the, the sauce was beautiful. The, the, the meat just fell right off the bone. I got to go back just because like a lot of their appetizers, really enticed me and i i didn't try any of them they have fried <laughs> fried chicken skins as an appetizer mm, seth Jesus, that sounds good deviled eggs with bacon seth dog right, <laughs> and they oh they, 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 it sounds so bad but they're so good they yeah. make they make their french fries in, in beef fat <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> in all fairness mike finn says you know because our bodies you know are made up uh, uh we gotta we gotta give proteins vitamins and and fat like our body's made up of like almost 30 percent fat you got to replenish your fat cells and mike finn says that animal fat is the best fat for us because it's the closest to our own fat so go eat them french fries and some yeah, beef right. fat yeah, boy right. they tasty so salt and smoke smoke and salt i think it's salt and smoke it's so good so i highly recommend that and anybody wants to, to grab me and take me I'll, i'm happy to go more than once <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yeah that's all i got we got one more show before the world series we're gonna do that it's gonna be late friday night but we have a big fun show that we've been kind of been talking about for a long time and it looks like it's finally gonna to come to fruition so i'm looking forward to that and more importantly i'm looking forward to seeing all of you at the 2024 beat baseball world series so everybody be well and we will see you later and vote for neil Ah, uh, boo, I cut you out. <laughs> yeah, right. I cut you out, dude. All right. We got it all in. We were to vote for Neil. We'll say that day on Friday. Uh, <laughs> I ended the live stream. Actually, I could leave that up on the, uh, on the oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, there you go. Let me uh, stop there.